So imagine if a manufacturer bought out a club that was perfect for every average golfer at a realistic price point. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? You see, without doubt, the biggest complaint I get right now in the comment section below, it's not about the performance of products, it's not about how a product looks, it's how a product is priced. But here's an interesting fact for you. Whenever I do a review about a product based on its price and its good value, it's one of the lowest viewed videos I ever put up, despite everybody claiming that their big issue is the price of golf, cl golf clubs right now. So if anybody wonders why clickbait exists, well, it's for those reasons, is because if you state that this is a, uh, a review based on a good value product, then like I said, people don't even switch on. Never mind, stick around. So let's give this a go. This product is from Cleveland. Stay there, stay there, don't go. Do not go, because I know already you've gone. It happened in the last video we did on these things and you missed out big time. Those of you who stuck around, whereas the comments were unreal about the Cleveland Halo XL. So many of you have played it, so many of you think it's such a good product as I did. And there's another one that you suggest I look at from their range, and I've got it in my hand now. It is the Launch XL Halo, but it's their hybrid. And I'm gonna tell you why this club is just as good as what we've seen in those irons or the hybrid irons, but it does one thing just a little bit better. Now, first of all, let me clarify exactly what I mean, does one thing better. The interesting thing for me was when I was playing the shorter irons in the, um, in the Halo XL range, I was more than happy with them. But when I got down that longer end of the bag, I started to think there was perhaps a little bit more help in a standard hybrid, since effectively that's what we were sticking in the bag, a bag of hybrids. But then I learned that there was a Launcher XL hybrid range, and when you get down to the four, the five iron, even the six iron, and I think these are an even easier option again. Now we're obviously gonna talk about price because the price point of these things is well ridiculously low by comparison to others in the marketplace. So that's a real appeal in the first instance. But I always say on this channel, I will never pay a lower price point if I think I'm really getting an inferior product and noticeably inferior is the first thing in terms of build quality and that's not what happens with anything from Cleveland to be fair but this uh, hybrid has been put together incredibly well and I love the way it looks at a dress they've got this matte finish there's a little bit of decal on the uh, heel and toe or the back end of it and then you turn the product underneath and you'll see again there's some um, raised soles that we've seen very much in the kind of the Cobra product before. And then the weighting system, you can see the weight has been pushed right to that back end. And we all know that that's gonna help us in terms of launch. So it's an even bigger bulk and mass than that of those um, Halo hybrid irons, I'm gonna call them, but done in a very tidy fashion. And I think, like I said, there's some uh, help and assistance down that long end of the bag that these things can provide. So if you can help me out with some feedback, first of all, is that um, I went into the studio this morning here at Four Golf and seen the full bag of the Cleveland irons, hybrid irons, whatever you call them, drivers and whatever else. And if I'm being perfectly honest, when I visit a pro shop prior to doing this job, then I wouldn't have probably took a second glance at their product um, from a, whether that's a, a golf snobbery perspective, I don't know, but there was no great reputation, if you like, that they were producing these kind of clubs other than their wedges has been of the highest quality. So what I wanna know first of all, is how many of you have shared that kind of attitude that I had, or am I just being, like I said, a unique golfing snob? The sound out of these is really good, you know. And as you can see, where I'm looking, the ball flight is exceptional. The comments, the word rather, that I used continually when I did last week's review, was how easy these things are to use. That was that hybrid iron. But this Halo uh, hybrid is just the same word I would use to describe, easy. We've got a 182 standard average carry on this and the loft on it is 21 degrees. But the ball flight's incredible and you see that 110 peak height is ridiculous. But there's also one other factor in there that's probably just working against me slightly at the minute, which is the setup I've got, and that spin being so high. And obviously we could make some amendments to decrease that, but what I also like at the same time is if we could bring that down to that sort of in and around that 4,000 revs, we've almost got the perfect four iron in hand here. So 4,000 revs of spin, a peak height of over 100 feet. You've seen that descent angle and a 182 carry. That makes that the perfect club to put in the bag. So why wouldn't you? 
Well, the answer to that question is quite simple. It's golf snobbery. I'm guilty of that, and I think many of you are as well, and we ignore these kinds of product. And the key thing about this is the performance out of it in terms of data is incredibly good. It would go head to head with any, well, you, you find criticism in it, you'd struggle to do so. I know it's a set of numbers, they're very, very good indeed. It looks really good as well, so that's another thing that ticks a box. And then you've got that price point, which makes it extremely appealing in terms of the pocket. But for whatever reason, the battle they still face is how the Cleveland get their clubs. And when I say their clubs, their irons, their hybrids, their fairway woods and their drivers, into more golfers' bags. Even how do they get them to actually try them in the first place and not just simply dismiss them because of brand snobbery? That's the biggest problem you've got, I'm afraid, Cleveland. And uh, But if you manage to achieve that and get people trying these clubs, then I've no doubt that people are going to be impressed enough to stick them in the bag. So another product from Cleveland that would get a massive thumbs up from me. And I've got to say, super impressed. And I recommend that you give them a go. Right. That's me done. As with that last video I did on Cleveland, please, more of you get involved. I've either got these in the bag, tried them, whatever. Give me your feedback and uh, let your fellow golfers know just how good these are and how they're missing out. Or maybe you just want to keep the secret to yourselves.